Let's look at Psalm 45 for a few minutes. Here it is on the screen. It's a wedding song and it has a great deal of beauty about it. It describes the man and it describes the woman. I just want to focus on the, the man. It's the king. It's the wedding song for a king. And we just look at the beginning parts. Many of these directions, we don't actually know a great deal about what they mean, like the word a mascal or something like that. But we have this and we have the fact that it's to, to a tune of lilies, which is a, a tune that is used elsewhere in the book of Psalms of the sons of Korah. And they were people who were who were cited in the temple. They were like a choir, but a, a professional group of musicians who were cited in the temple for the purposes of worship. They were intended to worship. They weren't just a band. They were worshippers. Imagine that orchestrated worship and the song comes from that group so that tells you that there's an inter, inter a flowing between the national event of a king marrying a queen and the spiritual significance of the occasion that's what we're focusing on now you often find that you know when they're speaking in the new testament about the old testament they say these things were written these things were written. They are figures and types of something else. And so, of course, again and again, we read the character of, of Jesus all the way through the, the Old Testament. And in Psalm 45, it's no exception. So here we go. Let's just, just look at it. I want to give you five qualities of a king. All right. And the first one is... There it is. My heart is stirred by a noble theme. I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. That's the sons of Korah. We are focused in on this, Lord God. We're focused. We are listening. We're watching. We're speaking with a prophetic voice. And then they start. You are the most excellent of men. You think, are they, are they just flattering him? Well, it's a wonderful word. The Hebrew word for most excellent actually means gorgeous. <laughs> That's the first characteristic of the king. He's gorgeous. He's, it's, there's a great attractiveness about him. He is worth listening to. He is pleasant to be with. Remember when they said about Jesus, the common people heard him gladly. When, they, when Paul was describing spiritual gifts, he said, let all be done decently and in order. But the word for decently is the Greek word for attractively. Let your worship be attractive. And when Jesus spoke, his speech was attractive. People were drawn to what he said and how he said it. They hung on his every word. And this attribute is the first one of the king, the king. He's gorgeous. He's, it, there's an attractiveness about him. Your lips have been anointed with grace since God has blessed you forever. So there's a bit of smooth talking going on here, but you've got that first attribute of beauty. Not just something that you coldly admire, but something that you are drawn to. Winsomeness. Then we've got another one here. Here we go. Gird on you, gird your sword on your side, you mighty one. Gird yourself with splendor and majesty. In your majesty, ride forth victoriously. So the second quality is, well, let's call it indomitable, absolutely undefeatable, unstoppable just driving forward like a bulldozer going through a cornfield, just taking it all in his stride. He said, the king is attractive. The king is tough, resilient and powerful. He drives forward, but he drives forward not in the name of power, not in the name of manipulative control, but in the cause of truth, justice and humility. So kind of flip around there. He's there. He's strong, but he's on strong on behalf of the weak. And this, of course, is a picture of, of Jesus. OK, let your right hand achieve awesome deeds. 
okay let your sharp arrows pierce the hearts of the king's enemies let the nations fall beneath your feet there's something else here which we have to read between the lines of it here it is it's really you love righteousness and hate wickedness and so the third quality i would say is a kind of rugged integrity i love the word integrity it's got grit right in the middle of it and i believe that our our characters need to have grit in the middle of them that we need to just stick with what is right and if it is unpopular or if it creates a negative impact on us it's still right truth is always truth it can never be a lie it can't be messed with i think this is what went wrong with Pilate when he do you remember when Pilate said what is truth what is truth he was playing with the idea because of different forms of truth there's a political truth an expedient truth and the truth that this man jesus seemed to represent and he was playing with those things what is he wasn't sure and he got lost in his doubts so he lost his integrity but the king the king here he's he's gorgeous he's indomitable and he has a rugged integrity that will not give and just two more two more wonderful ones in verse 7 there therefore god your god has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy i want to pick two words out of that one is the word anointing and one is the word joy and it says of jesus who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross so you've got that picture of integrity and indomitable strength and yet anointing and joyfulness who for the joy that was set before him so there we go how do you measure up to these things <laughs> what is the lord saying to you now because royalty is our identity service is our assignment and intimacy with god is our source of strength but royalty is our identity and these are characteristics of the lord jesus and they are characteristics of the jesus follower your words anointed with grace so they become attractive your actions indomitable definite clear sure your integrity intact not giving in to anything any negative report that might come against you holding it strongly that you have been given a trust to keep and to stick with and anointed anointed that means consciously operating in the spirit of god and joy i love the quote the most wasted of days is one without laughter and i love to think of jesus laughing with his friends and bringing joy when he speaks his speech was worth listening to i want mine to be like that <laughs> lord we pray that those five qualities might be implanted in us that we might walk in those ways and so follow you in humility in absolute obedience not looking for success but looking to stick close to your side and do what you say we love you lord we're here to do your will in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you today god bless